Welcome to an inspirational message by Pastor Harold Weiss, Senior Pastor at Little Falls Christian Center. This is a moment of holiness. It's a moment of the fear of the Lord. It's a moment of the presence of our God. It's a moment of God's manifest presence to reveal Himself in signs and wonders and miracles through the Word spoken, prophetic Word, inspired Word, what God is saying to His people. Your kingdom come. Your will be done tonight in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, you may take your seats. Thank you very much, everybody. And I have to say this to you that um, I made a decree. About two years ago, we did that first of the uh, prayer events, Prayer October. It's coming up again. And uh, we made a decree and said the Valdam will overflow. And it was in a very, very low state. And it shot up and it overflowed. He did that again this past year of rain season. And then we started praying for the Cape. And then I said, I made a decree. In fact, I prophesied. I said, God's going to smash the drought in Cape Town. I didn't say it'll rain. I said he'll smash the drought, which automatically includes rain because you need rain to break the drought, but in a smashing way. And at the moment, it's raining in Cape Town, like they say, buckets full. I was looking at pictures just before the service of street after street that looks like a river. And the N1 city, one of the big malls there, water in it, and everywhere, water just everywhere, and streams of water flowing in every direction, and uh, I was actually monitoring the satellite systems and uh, looking at something I've never seen before, not in the southern hemisphere, because you have a cyclone and you have an anti-cyclone. Now, a cyclone is basically when you have the movement that feeds water into a particular area of the planet in the southern hemisphere because it flows and pushes the water in clockwise. Anticlockwise, the anticyclone, works the other way around. Now you have a cyclone or cyclonic circulation and over the uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, shall I say the Atlantic Ocean, you have an anticyclone. So the two of them are like churning together, working together, one due south of, south of South Africa and the other one sitting in the Atlantic. And the two systems are working together and the focal point is Cape Town. And God is smashing the drought. Now hear what I've said, God is smashing the drought. And we said that, and I don't have the habit of just making certain statements in the past I warned by the Holy Spirit help that there would be a economical crisis and there was and I told the people better get ready and we even gave classes told the people how to snowball out of debt and all of that stuff we taught the people and we were ready for it and then it came and there was a huge worldwide economic upheaval and then this whole drought thing with the Val Dam and the upper country water system was there. God caused the Val Dam two years in a row to go to over 100%. And the whole Val system is filled with water. If you fly over it, the Val River is going strong. But if you go to Cape Town, now in Cape Town, that drought was a drought. It was a drought. It's no more a drought. And if I look at those two systems, have you ever seen a cyclonic circulation and an anti-cyclonic actually joining, taking hands and feeding the water in like that over Cape Town? Point of arrival is Cape Town. 
And if you look at the relative humidity, it's all over that part of the country. It'll move inland. It will, obviously, I can see by the flow of the winds. I looked at the wind flows and the streams. It's going to hit here. I'm not saying the rain, but certainly the wind will come in the next day or so. The, uh, the system is extremely strong. So I looked at that and uh, I said to more, tomorrow the wind's going to start blowing. By Tuesday, it'll drop in temperature. But now it's not time for a weather forecast. Let's leave that right there. I just happen to know about these things. One day, a professor walked up to me and he said to me, you will be a very good teacher of uh, uh, geography and uh, you could teach that thing like a song. I said, yeah, it's not a problem. It's logics, isn't it? Well, Luke 16, 16 is where I want to pick up tonight. And uh, at one minute to seven o'clock after the worship, he made a decree. And God is now annihilating that thing that was sitting there, that drought situation. And I love it when the Lord hears the prayers of the saints. One of the news reports said, the rain didn't come to Cape Town to play. And then there's pictures. Another one said, yeah, just what we've been praying for. Good. We give glory to Jesus Christ before I read the word. Let's give the Lord a praise. Offering. We thank you, Lord, that you have again heard our prayer as we stand in the gap for the nation with many people and the lips of many that are working together in prayer before the Lord, that you've heard your saints. You've heard the people countrywide call upon your name and you smash the drought. Oh, Lord, you are glorious. Can everybody just say amen? amen? Okay, let's go into the book of Luke, chapter number 16, verse number 16. I'm reading from the NIV translation on this one. There are several translations in front of me, but this one now to start off with. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. That's John the Baptist. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached, and everyone is forcing their way into it. New King James says, everyone is pressing into it. New Living Translation says, now the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone is eager to get in. Everyone is eager to get in. People want to get themselves saved from the bondage of sin and the fear of the wages of sin is death. The bondage of fear to death now has been replaced by the very covenant elements is the passage. They represent the passage that we have in Christ Jesus now uh, into the liberty of the children of God into eternal life. And I tell you something, it's fascinating. It's almost captivating. Sometimes I just sit down and I begin to meditate and these things play off in front of me and a whole story unfolds and I think to myself, where's the church now? I need to tell you these things. Oh. Now, the, the good news of the kingdom of God has been preached. It says here, since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached. So we pray our Father who is in heaven sacred, says the Jewish translation into English, is your name. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Powerful word in Greek. From point one to point two. From this point to the end point. With endurance, perseverance, focus. Parerkomai in the Greek. Erkomai actually should I say. Because parerkomai is used in uh, the book of Revelation uh, chapter number um, 21. It's a different, different context where you talk about the new heavens and the new earth. 
um, but Erkomai is simply to move towards an end vision with endurance, with focus, towards that end to finish what God has set out to do. The end vision of God. Like I've said by numerous occasions now, there's always a cross on the road. Therefore, your kingdom come is a process when you pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, verse 13 of Matthew 6 says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's actually the word there is in actual fact a adjective and it is in the singular form. So, and it's continuous. So there is trouble on a continuous basis created by the evil one. And because it's in the singular form, therefore, sometimes I should say, deliver us from the evil one. But actually it just says evil as representing everything that the devil causes. Now, having said that, Matthew 4, 8. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain. Now, most of the scholars and the people of the modern world agree. When you go to Israel, right above Jericho, there is a, like a fortress, like a rock outcropping high mountain. It's called the Mount of Temptation. And it's very, very high. And when you look at this exceedingly high mountain, from the top of that, you can see the hills of Jerusalem, mountains of the ridge towards Jerusalem. You literally see south and north, you see the promised land from there. But it says he took him on an exceedingly high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. That's audacious. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it's written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Now in Luke chapter number four, verse five, is the same section telling you fundamentally the same, but little difference that the two different authors brought out. I always like perspectives. Then the devil taking up, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. It's like an instance. It's very interesting, actually, if you look at the ISBE, International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, talk about instance in time and space. We live in the space-time continuum. So if you understand the physics of non-physics, in other words, the unseen, the book of, of Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 2 said, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things um, which are visible were not created from that which are seen or the things which are seen are not created from that which is visible. So out of the invisible, God created the things that we can see in space and time. As I've just quoted you here when I use the word a moment of chronos, time. And the devil said to him, all this, now notice these words. I mean, the audacity. And he said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory. He's got nothing that he deserves. The kingdom of God encompasses everything. It's an altogether illegal occupation. All, these, all this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me. Literally to hand over, entrusted to him. It means to hand over and um, yield. 
like in the case of an instruction to be obeyed, committed, give over, hand over, repeating what the dictionary says over and over. He says, all these things have been delivered to me. No, he stole it. He deceived Adam and Eve. Anybody out there? He's called the deceiver of the nations. And he goes into the eternal lake in Revelation 20 from verse number 11. He gets cast into the lake of fire and brimstone in verse number 10. He joins the beast and the false prophet going into Revelation 20 verse 10 into the lake of fire and brimstone. Verse 11, then of course the wicked dead are, are judged at the white throne judgment of the wicked dead, which is in Revelation 20 from verse number 11. All this has been delivered to me and I will give it to whomsoever I wish. He's got no wish. Now he's met his match when he met Jesus. In fact, he met way over his match. Very much, he met the son of God. And let me tell you, God knows God's got wisdom that he just doesn't have. For it's been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. That's just pure arrogance. Therefore, making it even worse, if you worship before me, all will be yours. This here from the NKJ, the New King James Version. Then Jesus answered Luke 4 verse 8 and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it's written, You shall worship the Lord your God only, and him only you shall serve. The word worship, by the way, is a very important word. People don't always understand what worship is, but it's, it's, um, it is, uh, it's, it's a Greek word. It's a, a word that says prosichomai, which you call my. It means, it means literally to prostrate oneself before him, go flat on your face, and with your hands stretched out, and then to literally to blow kisses towards him. In other words, to send him love. That's worship. In its most, most literal meaning. It literally means to express love to the heavenly bridegroom, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is to express love. That's worship. To the object the one true God in whom we believe. Can you say amen? amen? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. And to express that love towards him. But the audacity of the devil to even come along with that and say, this has been delivered to me. No, he stole it. Jesus called him. The thief comes not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. Now, this morning, I was giving you like what I would just consider to be a very brief synopsis of, wow, we, we jumped time there. We really jumped time. We started with the beginning of creation and we looked at what happened and we saw the judgment of Satan. We see him already a fallen angel in the Garden of Eden and we see him then bitterly jealous because he had sanctuaries, he was in charge of worship, his whole garment that he carries and that he had on had music connected to it. And a third of the stars, Revelation chapter number 12, was drawn by his tail and cast down on the earth. That was just fascinating stuff. Those stars in the Old Testament terminology in the prophetic interpretation is very clear that speaks of angels. So a third of the angels fell with him. We need to take special note for those of you that watch out for the music ministry because he had all to do with worship, with the music ministry. And it was with that worship and sanctuaries because he was in the, what you call the cherub, the cherub class angel, which was there 
mostly associated with the protection of the glory of God. Like you have these two cherubs, cherubim, that have their wings over the Ark of the Covenant and they look down at the mercy seat and the glory of the Lord appears like a blinding light in between those two angelic beings of gold on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, God's throne in the earth. So the, those cherub class or cherub class angels are, are always associated with worship, with protecting of the glory of God and, and preserving that culture of love expression towards God. And I come here var. He comes along and because Ezekiel 28 from verse number 11, he was lifted up because of his beauty, his pride puffed him up. And in Isaiah chapter number 12, we find how that, that um, he said himself, I'll be five times I will. And he says, I'll be like the most high God. God says, you're going to go the opposite direction. You're going to go to the depths of the pit where the worm will be your blanket, will be your bed. That's where you're actually going to be going. To me, this is an amazing thing. This damned, eternally damned creature manages to take Adam and Eve on the wrong journey, then because the wages of sin is death, it was a natural thing. It was a natural thing for the sin nature then to take over where there was no sin in their lives. The moment they broke the word that God gave, he said, everything around you, that's positive. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you, thou, you will not, thou shalt not eat. For the day in which you eat thereof, you shall muth tamuth, which means you shall die, die, which is physically and also in your spirit. Spiritual death. So man needs to be born again after that. Now, not only the devil was damned and all of those fallen angels with him, but mankind had now broken a direct instruction of God. The moment you break knowingly, particularly knowingly, a direct instruction, or you twist the word, you must understand one thing. For those of you with a fear of the Lord, to me, it's number one in my life. I fear God more than anything else, for sure. For sure, for definitely sure, um, that if you have the fear of the Lord, in the beginning was word, listen to me, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, the word emphasized in the Greek, the word was God. It tells you that like that in the Greek. It doesn't say in the word was God, it literally says by Greek, the word was God. John chapter number one, verse one. So the word was God and the word became flesh. Now you twist the word. You're twisting something in the nature and the character of God, in the very being of God. The spirit and the word agree. These three are one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The spirit and the word agrees. So when you take a word, that's why I was looking at something in the afternoon now, this afternoon. In fact, a title of some series of biblical studies, I suppose, where they talk about, I didn't, I didn't get into it, but it says, lost in translation. Secrets of the Bible, lost in translation. The moment you, you, you get paraphrased Bibles and all of that stuff, the moment you move away with a translation, the secrets of the Bible are never released. Cannot be released. So you have to stay right on the word like that. Like that. And the closer you can get to the word, the better. See? 
So you take the word and you twist it to suit what you want to believe. The word happens to be part of God because the word was God. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they're life. You twist that. You know, there's a place where Paul write, writes and he says these words. He says, some having twisted the word of God to their own destruction. Literally belly up, feet in the air, upside down, and a complete annihilation. A Greek word is called Apollo me, wipe out, as if it never existed before. You twist the word of God. Eh? <laughs> I want to tell you, you can mess with a lot of things. You can mess with trying to make a contract say something else or something say something but if you take the word of God and you twist it, the word of God is sensitive to the core of God because the word was God. See, it's just like that. It's like connected to the words, uh, to the nervous system of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You twist that, you're looking for trouble. So the devil comes and he says, oh, this is being delivered to me. Nothing's been delivered here. He's called a thief. He set up a kingdom of darkness and mankind sat in the land of darkness. The people who sat in the shadow of darkness saw a great light when the Son of God arrives. It was very nice for him. But it was aggravating that God would go as far as going to Abraham. And then with Abraham, set up a covenant. And then he looked at that. Then he thought, well, maybe I can take out that young man called David. And of course, David said, now who is this Philistine? Which means, who is this fellow chef? Who is this? That means in Hebrew, an unwanted, uninvited, uh, uninvited or unwanted immigrant. Is literally what it says. Uninvited immigrant. Invader. Who's this? Uninvited in, invaded this Goliath. Forget about it. We were standing there and I brought back stones and I put those stones in the hands of Professor David Block and he was completely fascinated. I mean, he held on to those stones and he held on to those stones. I said, This is where at the cave of Adullam, this is where Goliath and David had their battle. We were right on the spot, right on the spot by the cave of Adullam. You look up, you see David said, Ooh, from there will go and fetch me water from the well at, at, at Bethlehem. And those mighty men of David just went through those Philistines, cutting them down like a lawnmower. Brought water. David poured it out, says, at the blood of my men, I can never drink this water. They served King David. But, you know, this aggravated the devil. And he had all kinds of stunts. He created Babylon. Then, what you wouldn't know about, what you wouldn't know, in the book of the fallen angels and the book of the angelic wars, all stuff from the Dead Sea Scrolls. If you look at those books, the, I've been reading through those things. Um, if you look at them, then you see literally how that secret technology, so to speak, if it's a word that they use too much, too often, but I'll use it just for the sake of, of a, wanting a better expression. Secret things that man normally would not know about, they began to give to the people of Babylon so that they would perform pharmakia, far what we today call pharmacology or chemistry. And this uh, origin of pharmakia was witchcraft. That word comes from Babylon. And then that went across and they had all these special brews and stuff. And they carried that over into Egypt from Nimrod. And that's where that stuff came from. It's a whole study. For me, it's years of study behind the shoulder, but it all sits up here. Don't forget it. So, this irritated the devil no, no end. He tried to get Israel wiped out. First, the, 
northern 10 tribes, the lost 10 tribes of Israel. Then the southern tribes, the remnant of the northern tribes, the tribe of Simeon and the priest, the Levite, got them all out to Babylon in captivity by the rivers of Babylon where we wept well when we remembered Zion. They sat there, they wept, and Daniel was there, and he got the revelation from the prophet Jeremiah, 70 years have been appointed to thy people, 70 times seven. Daniel chapter number nine, by the way, from verse 24 to 27, gives you detail about that. Okay, there's no honor, don't die. All right, I'm just flowing. See. So now, this established system that a little stubborn nation called Israel would worship the one true God and there'd always be a remnant of people that would worship the one true God regardless of whatever he did, even in the times that they were evil kings. They stubbornly persisted in worshiping God. God's always got people in every nation that stick it out with him, that are loyal to the core, loyal to the bone. To me, loyalty is one of the prime characteristics. I mean, there's nothing like loyalty. Loyalty to me is, is Bible on it. You see, Judas Iscariot was faithfully there for three years, but he wasn't loyal. So if a person's disloyal, don't want to know his story. Don't trust them. Trust he's earned. So this stubborn little spot on the earth, Goliath couldn't succeed. Nothing helped. Attacks by the Midianites, the Moabites, any kind of the Egyptian forces, the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, couldn't get these people out of the way. In the time of Queen Esther, nothing could. Her name in Hebrew is Hadassah. It's one of the most beautiful names in the Hebrew language. Beautiful Hadassah. Music to my ears. All of this couldn't get rid of them. I mean, even in modern era times, Hitler killed six million Jews. Benjamin Netanyahu gets up and he says, you know what, Hitler killed six million Jews, but we are now six million Jews again in the promised land. It just didn't come together for him. Worse of all, suddenly Jesus arrives on the scene. And there he's face to face with a one that couldn't, <laughs> there was one too much for him, completely too much for him. By the vastness of his power, listen, concerning the Son of God, in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians chapter number one. The fullness of the Godhead dwells, in other words, lives in him bodily, is Jesus. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This devil comes along and says, this has been given to me. What do you think, Jesus? The word is thinking about that. That is one thing about truth. You can't twist it, but you can't bury it either. A grave won't hold it. There's one thing about integrity. Integrity, integrity will preserve you even if you die. It'll bring you out of that grave. If you're in a place where you say, it's end of the story for me, I can't get out of this situation. I tell you what, if you're walking in righteousness before God, no, but listen to me, if you're truly walking according to the kingdom rule, in righteousness before Almighty God, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Case in point. That's it. That's it. I'm beginning to enjoy myself now here in this place. If 
flows. This, it goes through my system all the days of every week. I sit and I read and I think and I compare that with that. And I think, my Lord, can't wait for Sunday. Now here is, to me, let me use an Afrikaans word here because I don't think there is such a thing. There, there is a similar word, I think, in English. But here is the devil's grootste blops. Here what's the is a blops. It's like a splat. See a drunken fly walking through ink and somebody comes with a fly swat and goes splat. His biggest blops was when he got them all revved up. It was part of God's plan. No man taketh my life. I have authority to lay it down and I will take it back again. I have authority to take it back again. And so the devil says, now, now if I, my, 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 problem, my, my problem is gonna be solved if I can just get this Jesus of Nazareth killed. Skirmunkel. The snake. The old serpent. However, the book of 1 Corinthians tells you very clearly, now we speak the wisdom of God, which none of the rulers of this world knew, because had they known, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Because the end result is going to be belly up for the devil and all of his cohorts, the whole lot of them. And it's not going to stop there either. Because the kingdom of God come means a process is activated. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. There's the king. Try and go for the king. You can stop the king, then that's it. Problem is going to be solved. Then we'll get rid of stubborn Israel. On the contrary, you don't take out the Messiah. Because he came for that very purpose. Now you must think, from the perspective of being at the right hand of the Father, the Son of God now manifests willingly, and the Romans are mocking, and the people of Jerusalem are revved up. The demonic forces, you know, in my mind's eye, it's just the way I think. I, to me, it's all a story, the picture there. And in my mind's eye, I can see that every demon spirit, it's like, it's like when we had the World Cup here at Ellis Park with a rugby many years ago, 1994, I think it was, with Francois Pinar or whatever. And South Africa won. And it was not a good day for the All Blacks, but it was a good day for South Africa. And... Um, this whole grandstand of demon forces, fallen angels, the superior ones wanting the ringside seat. And they're all there and they're revving up the crowd. Who shall we release for you, Barabbas? He was leading a revolt against the Romans. So they didn't really want to let him go. But it was the custom at the Passover to let one of the criminals go. So when the followers of Barabbas, because he was like a lead hocha, causing, that's a bug now, Dennis. Sorry about that one, because sometimes you just get out of the hocha is a bug. All right? So now, 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 who will be a relief for you? Barabbas. Here they take Barabbas, and he gets released. He's the troublemaker. The devil says, oh, that's nice. Now it's got to be Jesus. That's got to get killed here. He's got to get crucified. It's just what we want. And the demons are shouting in the spirit, and they're whispering in the ears of the crowds, 
crucify him, do that, and do this, and do that. And they're there. I mean, the devil is sitting there, and he's already planning his vacation. Because after this, the world's going to be his party ground. The main opposition is knocked out. And you know that, uh, to me, just confounding to me, just confounding to me, is that the Christ, the Son of God, allows himself to be beaten, his beard plucked out, whipped, cursed, Mocked. Given bitterness to drink. When he said, I thirst. And he allowed himself to have his hands pierced. He knew what was coming. By nails. The Roman nail, six inch long, thick things. He allowed himself for the hammer to bring down those nails and go straight through his hands. He'd taken on the form of a mere, mere man. And with his back burning, you know what they did? They whipped him and then they would put salt and olive oil into those wounds. The salt would burn like fire. The olive oil would stop the bleeding. So they could torture for longer. That's what they did. I mean, this is unbearable suffering he's going through. Representing you and you and you and you and you. All of us. And the devil is cheering on. The grandstand is full house. Not a place for one more demon there. The demons of the world had gathered. This was the big time. But it wasn't for them the big time. Because truth cannot die. The Holy One will not see corruption. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I will lay my, down, my life down. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it back again. Amen. Go ahead, drive the nails in my hand. After three days, I'll rise. Destroy this temple. And I will build it again within three days. They said, oh, what do you mean three days? The temple is impossible. By the way, not one stone of this one here is going to remain upon the other, which also happened. They overturned the stones to get to the gold that melted because of the Roman fires. You see that there? They attacked Jerusalem, burned the temple, and fire was into here, like would represent in the middle, would represent the temple area. Fire was burning there. Gold melted. The Romans literally lifted those stones out of place to get to the gold and carry the gold away and carry it home. They thought they were triumphant. They were never triumphant because the real temple was standing inside the temple. Come on, give the Lord a praise off. You want to give the Lord a praise off. Amen. You cannot kill him. Nobody can do that. Now, when it was all done, and he said, it is finished. Mission has been accomplished. He blew out his last breath. And <laughs> you know that expression, hell broke loose. Hell literally broke loose right upon the devil's head. In a moment's time, you see, in outside of the space-time continuum, time is completely different. 
when you realize eternal life, it's like forever, immediately, in any direction, forward and backward. It's a completely different, the physics of non-physics is a completely different story. So what was in outside of our dimension a moment? The Son of God manifest right there in the headquarters of the devil. And you can only imagine what kind of power was released towards the devil. You can only imagine what would happen or what did happen. I can think very clearly that at that moment in time, the devil just knew this is it. My headquarters ain't a headquarter, it's now an underquarter. It's under the foot quarter. And I can imagine the Son of God putting his head, the Greek word for that is pale, where you have an opponent in the ancient world and you had a wrestling match, you had to put your foot on the neck of the opponent and stand up and if the opponent can't fight anymore, you've won. And you can strip anything off him that you wanted. And I imagine that Greek word there would be very much applicable because the New Testament written in Greek from that culture, cultural background. And I can imagine that Jesus just took there the keys of life and death from him. Ripped it out of his hand. Broke his power. But like we'd say in the old Afrikaans, het ende niet. Because demons, you can think when the fire of the wrath of God was burning in the netherworld, what chaos ensued down there. I mean, they must have run in every day. The terror. I don't think one of those fallen angels didn't feel the fire of God. The wrath of God burning all over them. They fled in terror. They did not know what struck them. They did not know which way to go because God's fury was unleashed. The Son of God had now suffered pain and the, the price for the redemption of mankind is over. It's done, it's paid for. So it's not a full stop to the sentence. It's only the beginning. And those demons are running. They're falling over one another, pushing one another, get out of the way. And of course, then he arises. Like a flash of lightning. Like the bolt of a lightning bolt. The power of God hits that Roman peg that held that stone. And the chain around that stone in the archaeology held it in place so that it cannot be moved whatsoever. Roman guards and the earth begins to swim around them. You read the, the reports of Pontius Pilate. Earth begins to swim. They didn't know what struck them. The stone is rolled away. A gigantic angel goes in there, takes that thing like it weighed nothing, threw it one side and out steps the son of God, the resurrected king. I want to tell you something. What a moment in the history of all of creation. Listen, we talk about the founder of a ministry, the founder of a company. The, here is the founder of the kingdom of God walking out of that grave. Death couldn't keep him. The CEO, if you will, the chief executive, if you will, call it by whatever title, he carries all the crowns. He is the hero of all ages. He is the son of the living God and he's alive and he lives forevermore. Now I'll cut the story because I mean, I mean, I just, I just go on for a long time, but I, I mean, I get very excited about, excuse me. I have no seat belts for you. But listen. Demons are still falling all over the place. And Jesus goes and he says to his disciples, all hail, the Father sent me, so I'm now sending you. The next, 
good, better, best, bestest, very bestest, exceedingly bestest thing is the day of Pentecost. When they're all in one accord, one place, when suddenly they came from heaven, the sounds of a mighty rushing wind that filled the place where they were seated. They were seen by them, divided, cloven tongues of fire that divided themselves and settled on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues. The Spirit gave them utterance. And Peter, the apostle, when people started mocking, saying, these people are drunk, he says, men of Jerusalem, these people are not drunk as you suppose, but bringing it into modern context, it's only nine o'clock in the morning, they don't drink now. But as it is written in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit had begun. 3,000 people crucified with Christ, baptized in water. The old man dead, swat, 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 amosi stone dead to the world and alive to God. Suddenly the devil is facing an army. Army is beginning to multiply and the army is marching on and they're marching on. And I like Paul's depiction of the full armor of God. The army is marching on. The army is marching on. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The army is marching on. The army is marching on. And the army is full of Jesus. And the army is filled with the spirit of the living God. And they called the body of Christ and the bride of Christ and they got power and they got authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the devil. Woo! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Shout hallelujah. That's right, just carry on praying. Give the Lord a praise offering. That's right. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. And here we standing. You may take your seats if you can. 2,000 years later, and the good news is still the good news. And the good news also concerns this people, or these people, and every people that are here. I'll close with something in brackets. This army that's on the march, are you marching? Or are you just not involved? This army, the moment you, you decide to push back the darkness. Do you know that every soul that you lead to Jesus Christ, did you hear me, Jacques? Every soul you lead, the devil's having a step back, and another step back, and another step back, and another, and the army's just moving on. And he cannot stop it because the gates of hell shall not prevail. I should, I should issue a warning on a Sunday morning and say it's just a little bit too dangerous if you come on a Sunday night. <laughs> My dear friends, somebody from Weltefrieden Park, neighbor asked Alan for prayer. The worship leader, operation on his colon, very ill, bag attached. They don't have shiver at the bush, the bear. Please pray for healing and successful operation on this handkerchief. I pray over them all in one time now. Jacques Besson, his cancer stage eight, didn't even know there's an eighth stage, Dr. Dennis. 
Cancer stage 8. Dr. Finder. I don't All previous medical treatments have failed over eight years. But God. Jeremiah 30, 12 to 17. I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. I like that. Zane Janssen von Rendsburg. I have something wrong with my right eye. Where is Zane Janssen von Rendsburg? Zane Janssen von Rendsburg, would you please come stand right here? My eyes bloodshot, itchy, painful. Been to two doctors, said there's a virus in my eye. Gave me very expensive ointment to use, but no relief at all. Man, Jesus did it all for you. Okay, Zen. And what on earth is this? Look, there are lots of cloths here. You say, what are these cloths? I'm so glad you're asking me so many questions tonight. Acts 19, 10, and 11, God wrought special miracles to the hands of the Apostle Paul that even when the aprons and the handkerchiefs that were on his body laid upon the sick, that the demons departed, they were healed. They were healed. It's what it is. They were healed. I mean, I'm just the servant of God. That's all I am, nothing else. I make it my business, the business of the kingdom of God. And it's good news. And we are the carriers of the glory. We have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And there should be a passion this expression, coming from the youth, to win a soul is my goal. Old youth saying, youth always use that. To win a soul is my goal. Everybody under the, in fact, the whole church, lift your, your hand, connect it to your heart, your left hand. Lift it and say, to win a soul for God and the kingdom of God is my goal. Now give the Lord a praise offering for that. Pray for Michael. He is in Tara, currently diagnosed with schizophrenia. Suddenly, his whole future is in the balance. I've seen them come out of that in some very big hurry. You pray for them, and that thing is gone. Monica Skitter. So many people. Monica's 30-year-old mother, currently in a coma, I tell you. Still trying to determine the cause. She collapsed at work and is bleeding internally. She's not a born again Christian, but Jesus died for her also. I said, Jesus died for her also. So, God have mercy. Can you say amen to them? So, we pray for her. Not only for healing, but also for the salvation of her soul. God bring her back into a condition where she can commit her life to God and bless her with length of days. Can you say amen? And there's Lydia Truther, my goodness, diagnosed with AIDS and cancer. Hallelujah. This person is in the church. I'm not going to call this person forward for the dignity concerning AIDS. But I'd like that person, Pastor Jacques, will you stand up, please, to go to that pastor that's standing now after the church service will get other pastors and they will pray over you and anoint you with oil. This person. But I'll also pray the general prayer. AIDS and cancer. Thank you. And here is uh, somebody with stage 4 cancer of the stomach. Hallelujah. This is from Cape Town. Ekanichaluni. Ray Berryman wrote this. Is that you? Cape Town. Margaret Clock. I'm not sure because it's got an umlaut on the E. That means it's like German, but I can't make out the... I don't think my German is all that hot shot. But I can speak still. I can quite well understand, actually. Michael the young man, this is his clothing, pictures of Michael on the front and on the back, 
all over and just a cloth it doesn't say what for but huh is this the schizophrenia one okay my friends brothers and sisters in Christ beloved of the Lord will you raise your hands towards these cloths now according to your word it is written Acts 10 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with a Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil now Lord in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God who died and suffered on the cross for all these people whom we have been, been mentioning to the people, these, this list of people. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, died for them all. And we pray right here and now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you for their healing. According to your word. Jeremiah 1 12, you say, I watch over my word to perform it. Isaiah 55 says, My word shall not return to me void, but in those things whereunto I've sent it and prosper thereunto. Let the word of God be quick and powerful, sharper than a two edged sword against all of these things, schizophrenia, the spirit of schizophrenia. Come out, you foul spirit. Be bound, you spirit of schizophrenia, you spirit of deception and bondage. Come out, leave him. Leave him in Jesus' name and go in the name of Jesus. All of these people here, Father, I pray, and I just, we lift them all up except for Zane standing in the front. We pray for him now. We, Father, lift up this before the throne of God. We present it to you. You know every single case from Cape Town to here to hospitals everywhere. It is tragedy, Lord. It's tragedy. And it's for this very purpose that the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Now, he's targeted some of the people that belong to you. These people belong to you. You've died for them all. You love the world, not some people in the world, but for the world. And Lord, there are people here, some of them have not even been saved. It doesn't matter, you died for them. Based upon that, Isaiah 43, 26 says, Come, let us reason together. State your case that you may be justified. So I state the case for these people. And I'm saying, Lord, they need salvation and they need healing. That's why you went to the cross. That's why you suffered. And so to your glory alone, we pray this in Jesus Christ's name as we request this to Almighty God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. To you be all the glory and the honor forever that you will heal these people according to your word right now in Jesus' name. We break the power of sickness, bondage, disease, and demonic influence upon their lives and loose them from the powers of darkness in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen. Zain Yansa van Rensburg. Where's the oil? George, to a Yodadom was. My goodness. This is nonsense. His eye is very red. But I'm telling you now, this is nonsense. And I don't take no for an answer. How many of you say amen to that? I mean, the gates of hell shall not prevail. I mean, there's a child of God, faithful in church, always see them in church. And there's nonsense. And if anybody here in this place, you're feeling sick, just put your hand on wherever in your body you're feeling sick. Whatever, just put it there now because the power of God's present to heal you. This is nonsense. Now I put my hand over this eye and I rebuke the spirit of sickness. I rebuke this thing. Come out and let him go in Jesus' name. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless the doctors. They're doing their job. They're doing a fine job. They want to see the people well. But I'm putting my hand on this thing here. And I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, in Jesus' name, I command this thing, leave his eye now in Jesus' name. And I bind Satan and quench this fiery dart of the enemy. Give the Lord a praise offer your mother. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're sitting like you would sit where you are and I can start all over again and I got enough to do just that. And you'd sit here till after midnight. Akenyala. You're all just... How many of you feel encouraged tonight before I close? How many of you feel God was talking to you and giving you some faith again? Let me see your hands right now. Now would you give Jesus a praise offering for all of this? <laughs> Amen. I, I just... I have to ask you this. I seriously have, you ask, I have to ask you this. How many of you tonight... Seriously consider yourself part of the army of God now. Now give the Lord, a, if you're part of the army of God, stand to your feet. Give the Lord a praise offering right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Right, that brings us to the end of this session, my goodness. Lord, to say these things, to tell the people these things, is like pouring the sweetest waters of life on the souls of mankind. It's like refreshing, empowering to the soul. It's like the wonder-working God involved with mere mortals such as we are and giving us eternal life because of our faith and our trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Thank you for everyone that you healed tonight. Thank you for removing sickness and disease and infirmity from the midst of us. Thank you for your kingdom in South Africa. We say concerning South Africa, concerning every family here in this church, tonight and the rest of the church, these words, your kingdom come in the lives of those we love, in our own life, in every, every individual life here, Every department of our lives, every aspect of our lives, let the kingdom of God rule and principle completely take over. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we may live the abundant life in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. If you have For more teachings like this and other material, please visit our website at www.littlefallsonline.com.